Praise the Lord. I'm Dr. Andrews with Kingdom Success TV, welcoming you to our program. You are about to be blessed. Uh, text quickly or phone somebody, text or phone somebody and tell them there are two anointed preachers who is going to have a great discussion in how you can reach your next level. Today, I have Pastor Joey with me all the way from Dallas, Texas. Amen. Welcome, Pastor Joey. Thank you for be having me. It's good to be here. Glad to be here. Hallelujah. Well, today what I would like to do is asking you, Pastor Joey, uh, how do you uh, see the Father Sonship Spirit in the church? Uh, is it necessary for the children to become mature or can the children just remain in the outer court, just being water baptized, of course, saved, water baptized? And can they just remain in uh, that outer court without having to be matured? Well, um, when I think about sonship and I think about kingdom and I think about that, that is, you know, the key relationship is father mm -hmm. and sons. And when I think about that, I, I, I think about how that, Everything in the kingdom that is, you know, given to us is is to be stewarded, and right. stewardship takes ultimate responsibility. Um, you know, it's one thing to obtain a, a vehicle; it's another thing to maintain a vehicle. I right. can I can go out there. That's uh, there's a lot of ways why the economy is crashed today is because everybody was able to obtain a house, but they didn't have the the management or the stewardship to maintain the house. Right. And I think that the kingdom principle works the same. So when we're talking about maturity, I think the the mark of maturity is is very key for those to really access the kingdom in, in, in its fullness and in, in the power and authority of it. I, I can tell you this, I wouldn't give my little seven-year-old son the keys to my car. Right. Tell me, uh, uh, Pastor Joey, uh, the reason you, you will not give the keys to your a seven year old or to a child your vehicle uh, keys in the church, do you think that we have given people authority to run with ministries and they were not mature? Absolutely. I, I think that when you when we look at the church and, and we look at the, the broad scope of it, you know, I, I, everything I believe starts first with kind of the Saul, mm. the Saul order. When we look in the Old Testament, we see Saul, then David, and when you think of Saul, you think of uh, maybe the abuse of something, the the abuse of it. But then David kind of brings the purity of it, the 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 original intent of what God had, and so I think that you know with the fathers and sons and 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 with authority, especially especially in the area of leadership that there has kind of been a salt order that's kind of come first. But I believe what God's doing now is, is He's bringing us to a place of transition from this Saul type order of, of dominating authority to mm. uh, a, an understanding of authority and submission. One thing about authority is it has to be, it, it's, it has to be given from the individual. It's not something that can be demanded. And so if I'm in authority, I can't demand of somebody to have to, to respect my authority. Mm. I, I, I have to allow them to give me access into their life to allow that authority. So what, 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 would, you, what, what would you say that in the church, in the church, would you say that uh, uh, the children, look, creation is crying out for the true sons of God Absolutely. to be manifested. And would you say that uh, there is a need for the children to become sons so that we can affect the systems in the world, like Joseph, for instance? And is there any process? Uh, can you just automatically, can somebody just lay hands on you and say, well, you are a son now? Absolutely. Well, <clears throat> let's tie this together a little bit. You're talking about maturity, uh, and, and now you brought up Joseph, which is a great point, because when we look at Joseph, and, and we begin to think of his dream, you know, his dream to rule. He tells his brothers, the Bible says they hated him. When he goes and tells his father, the Bible says that his father rebuked him. 
Uh, and, and when you think of that, you think, man, he rebuked him. But it also says that his father kept the matter in mind. He, he, it wasn't necessarily that he was rebuking him. I think his father realized that Joseph's dream was beyond where he was at that moment wow. in, in the maturity of his life to manage such a dream. And so I think that, um, that, that it's a critical process. And, and I believe that pain is in it because, you know, the, the dream and, and, and the destiny of, of ruling and reigning and having this authority and affecting, you know, global, mm. uh, you know, nations and, and economies and affecting that for, for God's glory and God's kingdom, it, it's going to take a, a great process. And, and that, that is fulfilled on only one way. That's pain. That's pain. So are you then say pain is part of a maturing process? Absolutely. It's natural. I mean, when we think of children in, in our own natural bodies, they have growing pains. Um, so pain and growth uh, work together in order to bring something Hallelujah. to maturity. Amen. Yeah, I just get excited here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Now, yeah. now, let me just ask you this. So are we then saying that unless there is pain, there's no change? That's absolutely correct. If I don't go through something, if I don't, pay, let's think, you know, think of the anointing. We, we all th talk about the anointing. I, I want an increase of anointing. I want the anointing. I want that. But when you think of the anointing and you think of the, the, the oil that was pulled out of that, the only way to get that oil is to press uh, which means that that grape, that wow. olive has to be crushed. There is a crushing and a crushing. pain that comes out of it. To, to find my life, I must lose my life. Wow, that is, that is quite a statement. To find your life, you say we have to lose our life. You know, I wonder, uh, sometimes I make that statement that everybody needs a Judas in their life. Oh, absolutely. Because unless you have a Judas, you are never going to go to your Calvary Absolutely. to die to self. That's right. Is it possible that in the church that children are very happy to remain children because they're not willing to go and die to self, to mature and become sons? I, I believe that we have to capture the heart and the vision of God. Jesus you know, he came and revealed this father-son relationship. Uh -huh. I mean, this is the primary relationship that he came. He said, me, I came to reveal the father. He said, the father and I are one. And and so when we think of that, we think that Jesus had a a vision beyond the pain. And and as a son, knowing the heart of your father, you have to have a, a, a vision beyond that pain. Mm -hmm. Hebrew says that the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. So he, he was able to look, and I think that it's important for fathers, spiritual fathers uh, speaking in, in the church, really anchor sons to character, anchor sons to not get out of the pain, but to stay in the pain. Wow. Uh, and, and begin to look beyond where they are and understand there is a joy beyond this. This is process, and you must go through this in order to you know become what you really have inside of you to become. There has to be the pressing. There has to be the the uh, the Judas, as you put it, in your life that helps move you to to where you need to be. And and a lot of times those those people will come into your life and they'll move you to pain. Now, uh, would would you then say? Uh, I'm just thinking of the audience out there uh, that uh, I mean somebody's looking at this and you say, wow. Do I really have to go through pain because I've now just become a Christian? I mean, surely all my problems are fixed because I've accepted Jesus. <laughs> I don't know about others, yeah. but the day I became a Christian and accepted Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, then I discovered how messed up I was. Right. And right. so in the outer court, you know, you know that I always teach on the outer court. You know, there's an outer court 30-fold and a... Holy